What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. In today's video, I'm gonna be installing the nicest short shifter possible that you can install on your Nissan 370Z. So I scooped up a Cooler Works short throw shifter. I have a very similar one that's installed in my Mini Cooper and it is unreal, the shifts. They're super precise. It feels literally like, like you're loading a gun and you're like literally cocking it back. It is insane. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install everything that you see here but there's something that you're gonna to need to install in addition to this that I'm gonna cover at the end of this video. It's very important in making sure that the transmission and everything feels good over a long period of time. But first things first, let's take a look at the stock shifter mechanism because it's still, you know, a little bit sloppy. We're gonna change that out. So the stock shifter mechanism is completely stock. So we have the stock shifter, stock boot, stock everything. And you can see the shifter, you know, it's decent. It feels pretty good if you guys have ever driven a 370, but there's still room for improvement. So what you guys see here is the entire upgraded setup from Cooler Works. So this is the entire shifter mechanism that replaces the stock piece. I opted for a black shift knob. You guys can choose any color you want. And if you guys also want, you can choose to get this shaft here skinned in a layer of carbon fiber. Now, in order to install this piece here, it's crucial to have this. So if you guys buy the kit, it's gonna come with both the shifter arm and this base plate. And this is what bolts up to the stock body of the car. Um, and this basically makes it so that the shifter, instead of it being mounted to the transmission, it's mounted to the body. So so it moves a little bit less. Now because the stock shifter, it has the shift pattern on top of the shift knob, when you replace it with this aftermarket one from Cooler Works, you're losing that shift pattern. So I purchased this part here from Nismo and this has the shift pattern inside there. But it's a pretty cool inexpensive sticker that you can throw inside the car so that if anyone ever drives the vehicle that isn't familiar with the shift pattern, they'll know where each gear is. So to get started with the install, we need to remove the stock shifter assembly. Begin by holding down both sides of the shifter boot surround and give it a yank upwards. That will release the plastic clips towards the rear, securing it to the center console. On the bottom side of it, there's going to be one single electrical connector that has to be removed. It's a bit tricky to show it on camera from this angle, but it looks like this. You slide the harness out from the clip towards the passenger side. Then with a pair of scissors or wire cutters, cut the zip tie that's holding the upper portion of the shift boot up to the plastic clip around the shift lever. Following that, the shift knob has to come out. If you've already swapped out your OEM shift knob for an aftermarket one, you already know how much of a pain in the ass it is to remove, let alone removing it without damaging the shift knob. Off camera, I tried a couple less destructive methods, but I couldn't get anything to break the shift knob free. So I went with the full send method and went with a pair of vice grips and rotated the shift knob counterclockwise until the thread locker on the threads broke free. It seriously feels like you're gonna break something in the trans by how tough it is to break it free. However, after you do rotate it a good full turn, it's a walk in the park from there. So after you rotate it about 20 times, it does seem to come out and it does seem to make it a little bit easier. But I really don't know how most people or even some people are able to take this out without damaging the shift knob. I had to use the vice grips and damn it really hacked this thing up. Take a look at this. Now what Nissan doesn't tell you is that they use blue thread locker on these threads to keep the shift knob from coming off. I really don't know why they did that because well it's definitely on there a little bit too tight. Uh, but at least the shifter is out. So the knob is out. So we can now move on to removing the one, two, three, four bolts under here that are securing the base plate up to the body of the car. So we're going to have to remove that entirely from here so that we can install the Cooler Works shifter. You can use regular hand tools to get this done, but I'm using an electric Milwaukee ratchet to save me a bunch of time. The four M6 bolts are pretty easy to get to, at least the front two. For the rear two bolts, I'm using a wobble extension that allows the socket to offset itself from parallel to the extension. I don't use them all the time, but they are very handy in tight spaces. A universal socket can also be used in places like this. With all four bolts removed, you can wiggle the shifter base plate and dust boot from the body of the car. We won't be reusing any of these pieces. You can see that with it removed, it further exposes the shifter assembly. So following that, the rest of the work that we have to do is gonna be done underneath the car because we need to remove all the hardware that's connecting that shifter linkage up to the shifter. So we need to take the stock parts out because we're not gonna be reusing that anymore. So as of right now, these are gonna be the only parts we're gonna actually remove from the inside of the vehicle. So we've got the shift knob, the little zip tie, 
and then the boot and this plate from inside the cabin. We're gonna be reinstalling that trim piece that goes over top of all this, so it will look pretty OEM after we're done. The only part that we're gonna be able to see that's aftermarket is basically this portion here, and that's gonna be sticking out from the shift boot. So following this, we need to go underneath the car. So from down under, looking upwards by the rear of the transmission, we'll be able to see the shifter directly above the drive shaft. This rubber boot will need to be moved to expose the single 10 millimeter bolt that's going through the shifter arm that selects the gear. It's going to be a tight space, but you can crack the bolt loose with a ratchet and then fully remove it by hand. Jumping back into the cabin, underneath another rubber boot, there's going to be three bolts holding the shifter lever in place. Using the same Milwaukee ratchet, take all three of them out, but bear in mind that there's going to be a spring that's pushing upwards on this triangular plate. Lift up on the shifter lever with the hardware and set it aside. Next up, go back to underneath the car and loosen all four of the 14 millimeter bolts that are securing the transmission brace up to the body of the car. The brace right here holds the transmission mount in place, which supports the transmission. By lowering it, it will give us more room above the transmission to remove the hardware that's securing the four link shifter support. There will be two bolts found on both sides and another two found on top. Without lowering the brace and transmission, the two side bolts will be easy to remove, but the two upper ones will be pretty much impossible. So with the jack supporting the weight of the transmission, you can fully remove the four bolts holding the transmission brace. Then, after you lower the jack with the transmission about an inch or so, it will give you enough room. With all four bolts for the shifter support removed, you should be able to finagle it around the drive shaft and past your Y-pipe if you haven't removed it. So with all of this OEM hardware removed, the only parts that we're actually going to be reusing is going to be this bolt down here, and that's pretty much it. So the boot we're not going to be using, the shift knob we're not going to be using, this entire lower bracket along with the OEM shifter we're not using it at all. Now you are going to need to clean up this bolt because it's going to be covered in grease. On the bottom side of the shifter you can see that there's definitely some silicone or something down here, um, and we don't want that to be on the threads when we retighten this up to the shifter linkage. With this removed, we can get started with installing the CoolerWorks hardware onto the car. Prior to the install, we need to assemble the base plate and the actual shifter mechanism. So the hardware is all gonna be included inside this kit. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be fastening these bolts here through the base plate into the shifter. Now we also need to put Loctite on there because once we put this all together, we don't want this to come apart, especially if we're driving. Um, if you guys have upgraded motor mounts or transmission mounts or anything else that will increase the NVH in the car, the Loctite is going to be even more critical. So it comes with some in the kit. This is a Ford Motocraft thread locker and sealer. It's a medium strength. I'm not going to open this up only because I already have some, uh, but you can pretty much use any medium strength thread locker. So this lower base plate moves, but don't tighten the hardware until it's fully mounted into the car. These lower recessed areas of the base plate are where the hardware for the shifter lever thread into. So with the shifter lever through the rubber dust boot on the base plate, align the four bolt holes together. Put some Loctite on the threads of each bolt and mount them into place with a four millimeter hex head. There are no instructions or torque specs that are supplied with this shifter, so just use your judgment for how tight these stainless bolts should be. Considering the shifter is made out of aluminum and the bolts are stainless steel, don't over torque the bolts because you can definitely ruin the shifter by over tightening them. With the cooler work shifter assembled, it can now be installed on the car. Installing these kind of shifters isn't exactly a hard process, but it is a little bit time consuming. So if you guys can set aside an afternoon, you should be able to knock this out without a problem. Getting back into the car for the 50th time, the shifter and base plate can slide into the center console area. Now it's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but if you angle it the right way, you'll be able to fit it. You'll then need to fasten the base plate to the chassis in the same bolt holes as the OEM base plate. With all four bolts in place, put a little bit of blue thread locker onto the lower shifter arm bolt that's found underneath the car, and then tighten it up to the linkage. You should have a bunch of threaded bolts sticking through the welded nut with the bolt fully tightened. Moving back into the interior, you can move the base plate and dust boot independently. Now with that being said, if you move the base plate forwards or backwards, it will move the shift knob either closer to the radio or closer to the cup holder. With it positioned how you like, fasten all the bolts to lock it all into place. So before you go ahead and install the stock shifter bezel uh, back over top on the center console, you first wanna make sure that the shifter is set up properly. So what I mean by that is you're gonna have it so that with your foot on the clutch, you can properly engage every gear and you're gonna change the set screws that are found down on the shifter assembly. 
So the two little set screws here, they're both propped up against the shifter so that it stops when you engage the left gears, first and second. And then when you shift to the other side, the same thing happens for five and six. Now you also may need to adjust this height here in relation to this rod so that you can properly engage reverse, which will allow you to bring the shifter all the way over and down or wherever your reverse is. Once you do that, you can slide the entire OEM shifter assembly back over top like the bezel. You're gonna need a five millimeter Allen socket or Allen wrench to remove the one bolt on the top of the shifter assembly. And with that, you'll be able to take the shift knob off. You can then slide the entire assembly for the shifter bezel over top and then with that being said you can slide it down over here and then using a zip tie you're going to attach the shifter boot onto the lower portion of the assembly and it should look something like this and the throw is so much better if you guys have a shifter assembly that is stock, I promise you guys, you're gonna be able to benefit from an aftermarket shifter like this. So this Cooler Works shifter, I have one in my Z now, and I also have one in the Mini. They're unreal, I promise you. Alrighty guys, so I've been driving the Z for the past week or so, and uh, I've been driving it, you know, just casually, and I've been driving it like I've been, you know, driving a rental. And uh, I gotta say, this shifter feels very good. There are some pros and cons to this setup, but I gotta say overall, it's a very well-rounded shifter. So the shifter, the install, it isn't too difficult of a process. If you guys have ever done brakes on your car or if you've ever done like simple maintenance to it, I feel like you guys should be able to tackle this. Um, given that you guys have a jack and at least two jack stands, you should be able to get this done without a problem. As for the install, uh, one of the things you're going to need are going to be longer bolts or longer M6 bolts to secure the shifter base plate to the body of the car. With that being said, once you do that to accommodate for the larger thickness for the actual shifter base, once you get past that, the shifter is going to mount up and everything's going to be good to go. Something else to note is that underneath the transmission, the stock rubber boot that's basically covering the shifter linkage from uh, the exterior elements and all that stuff, you aren't necessarily going to be able to run that again. So you can either cut it off, take it off, or do whatever you guys want with it. There's not going to be a use for it after you install this shifter. Now let's get to the pros of the shifter. It is so damn precise. I freaking love this thing. You guys can drive this thing hard, you can drive it easily, you can, you can drive it any way you want, and it's just going to reward you. This is the closest thing you're gonna get to a sequential shifter, well, obviously without buying a sequential shifter. It's a little bit more on the expensive side compared to other short throws, but it is in its own league. So that little rattling noise that you hear, that is something that I kinda wanna play around with a little bit, but it's not something that would definitely turn me off. If I'm gonna find a con with the shifter, that has gotta be the biggest con. Everything else is a pro. This thing is killer. If you guys wanna run this shifter in your car, this is now going to be chassis mounted versus transmission mounted before. So if you guys can, buy engine and transmission mounts because it will make the shifting experience and everything a lot more tight. So if you guys wanna see that video, you guys can stay tuned because I've got that video following up for you guys. If you guys have any further questions regarding the video, comment section down there you guys know what to do if you guys want to find the links for the products in this video or the tools or specs or anything it's all down there as well thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you in the next one